<clears throat> so here's the deal. This is a one. So get this, I get to pick up yet another brand new Skeeter FXR bass boat. That is quite an amazing and humbling thing to get to say. Well, how's it going everybody and welcome back to TRF. My goal on this channel is to help you guys become better bass anglers with every single video that you watch. and probably the most important tool that I get to use in order to teach you guys how to become better bass anglers is this what you see behind me, my Skeeter Bass Boat. Skeeter is one of the best boat manufacturing companies out there. They were the first company to ever believe, at least in my experience, on a, on a big scale, in the power and influence that us YouTubers and social media people can have. And they brought me on three years ago. I was incredibly humbled. I, I talked about the, the process of joining the Skeeter Pro team in my podcast that I'll have linked below. But just such an awesome company to be a part of. And they believe in what I do and they make an amazing product that I love making videos for you guys out of. And so every year I get the opportunity to sell my, my previous year's boat and pick up a brand new boat. Now usually I spread this into several videos where I have a uh, picking up the boat vlog, then I have a, a rigging video for power poles, then a rigging video for electronics. This year I'm putting them all into one. So this video is gonna cover everything from picking my brand new boat, still with the factory cover on it from the factory, putting on power poles, putting on electronics, rigging the entire boat so it's ready to go to make videos and catch big bass for you guys. So without further ado, let's get back to Austin. I was wrong, we're in Waco. So welcome to the first step in building my bass boat. The boat is bare of all basically necessities that you need to catch fish because you can't really dump this in the water and go catch fish right now. It has a main engine, so I guess I could technically get somewhere, but it doesn't have any batteries, so I can't even turn the engine on. It's basically missing everything. Uh, I'm with my buddy Alton Jones Jr. MLF angler, resident boat mechanic here in Waco, Texas, where we live. Uh, we're in his dad's shop right now, and we're going to be putting on a few things in this part of the video, and then I'm gonna head down to Austin, where I thought that I was going, to install the rest with my dad. Last year, we did all this in several videos, like I mentioned. Today, we're probably gonna put on the trolling motor and at least the live scope unit, and then figure out time-wise what else we have to do for today, but it'll just be a fun time of putting things on. So we have run into a predicament, folks. <clears throat> we open up the box, from uh, Minn Kota for my trolling motor, and we're missing a very important piece that you need to actually build this thing. So we're gonna try to figure out if we need to go to a trolling motor parts place, but I don't even know if they have one around here, or just skip this, save that for later, and do the power poles or something. I don't know. All right, good news, we found it. It was in the boat the whole time. <laughs> it Begin wasn't in the box, it was in the boat. Begin the time lapse now. So progress is quickly being made. We have put the trolling motor on the boat. Pretty simple, it was like one screw and one bolt, and it's good to go, hopefully. We still, of course, have not tested it yet. We don't have any power to really test the tube. We hooked it up to power, uh, unscrewed the base plate here, and put the pedal down, and have to also screw that in when I get home. And now we're gonna put the live scope unit in. So live scope is Garmin's forward facing sonar that I used last year. Absolutely loved it, got it again. So we're gonna have to take this thing called the black box, which powers live scope, uh, install it underneath the right side, the starboard, starboard side rod box, feed the cable to the trolling motor, and then of course tape the cable to the trolling motor. So live scope is ready to go. It's getting loud in here. So hopefully you guys can hear me over that vibration while Alton puts the black box uh, inside the rod box for live scope. I'm actually gonna take off the ladder that's on the jack plate here. I don't really need a ladder to get back into the boat and I feel like it just kind of gets in the way for the wrap company and just for the power pole. So I'm gonna take that ladder off and of course stow it off to the side for the boat buyer in case they want the ladder when they buy the boat. 
installing two 10 foot blade anchors, the highest uh, quality power pole they make. So we're catching up on how to install power poles by watching my own power pole installation video. I'll have that linked below. Of course, I'm not gonna go into all the details about how to install every single thing because I've made videos about that before. But if you wanna see how to install dual power pole anchors on a bass boat, any kind of bass boat out there, I have the instructions that I'll have linked below. So probably just have time today for the brackets, but if they go fast, we might keep going, we'll see. That's all she wrote for uh, this, not this episode, we're not done. This part of rigging, now we're gonna see y'all in Austin. All right, folks, we have made it to Austin with the boat. Actually, I can't show you guys the full color yet. Actually, you've already seen the full color. It's black and white. But we are here with my dad and we're gonna do the entire rigging process and the rest of this video. And so we've got wiring harness to put in, we've got boat electronics and electronics mounts, we've got batteries, we've got the power pull charge, and of course we got a few things we have to strip off the boat first from the Skeeter factory, some hummingbird stuff and some wiring stuff. Uh, we got a lot to talk about and a lot to do, so let's hop on it. Now what you guys definitely did not see in that time lapse you're watching now is the two and a half hours of work that my dad and I put in to take out the Minn Kota four bank charger, put in the power pole charge system, figure out which wires go where. Of course, when you don't have any batteries in your boat, it can be confusing as to what your boat builder actually did with those wires or what the intent behind the wires are. And so we uh, we hooked up a wire that was confusing up in the, the front of the boat and a same colored wire that was confusing back here. Turns out it is a negative for the trolling motor. So we got all that stuff figured out. Uh, we have the four batteries put in. I'm working with Pro Guide batteries for this year. They are an incredible company that I've gotten to know uh, up in Missouri. They've got a ton of wisdom when it comes to building batteries. and we have some really cool stuff coming soon. So right now I've just got three lead acid batteries uh, in the back and one AGM, gonna be running an AGM battery all year, which of course is not lead or lithium, it's a kind of gel uh, substance on the inside and that battery is heavy. Getting that battery in the boat, <laughs> that was a struggle. But it is one o'clock in the morning and so we're gonna call it a night and do the rest of this stuff tomorrow. It'll probably be about six to eight hours of work. Even though we've done it before, it's still a ton of work to get all this stuff in the boat. So we're gonna call it a night, before we put on the boat logics mounts in the morning, the Sonar Pro's wiring harness, and of course the power poles onto the back of the boat. So we'll see you guys in the morning. Well, good morning everybody and welcome back to day, well day three officially of rigging, but day two here in Austin. We are now in the process of trying to figure out how to get the wires from Sonar Pro's, which I'll talk about here in a second from the back of the boat at the starting battery all the way up to the console and the bow. So we're running a coat hanger as uh, as you do. Pull it up all the way, carefully. Oh, great. I have now caught on something. And also kind of simultaneously and before we did the uh, Sonar Pro's wiring, uh, we are putting in the base plates to the Boat Logics mounts up here at the front of the boat. We just had to of course drill some holes that were bigger, suck out the, uh, the extra fiberglass because you never want to do a bad job and leave fiberglass hanging around your boat. It'd be super easy to just cover it up because you never see it, but just for the sake of uh, cleanliness and f future boat buyers of this exact boat, I uh, want to make sure that it's nice and clean and well done. The base plate is on, now we're gonna get back to wiring. We are taping all of the Sonar Pro's harness, all three of them together. That way when we feed it through, it doesn't get lost or damaged, yeehaw, oops, got it. Now what is the benefit of a wire harness and what is a wire harness? Well, the deal with electronics and everything on a fishing boat is that 
everything takes power. And of course, the more you use those things that need power, the more it takes power away from your batteries and of course causes those electronic uh, parts of your boat to not function as well because the, the amount of power they need to operate doesn't change, but the amount of power throughout the day does change because you keep using that power. And so I had issues with not just Pearl, our, our family boat back in the day, with some old Lawrence units, but also my last two boats running Hummingbird Graphs because they draw so much power every single time that they're being used. So when I would crank the engine, the graphs would restart almost every single time. That's just a huge hassle. And so I got in touch with Sonar Pros. They make a custom thick gauge wire harness that goes basically from the main battery in the back comes up to each individual thing that needs power. So the graphs, the live scope box, and, and allows perfect uh, power connections to each one of those individually that is not dependent on any sort of splitter uh, that usually the, the, the boat company puts in for the accessories, uh, the accessory wires, and the power goes from the splitter to each of the accessories. That causes a lot of unnecessary power draw, and so I'm looking forward to having zero power issues with these harnesses. Top of the phalange. Uh oh. Okay, we're good. Let's go a little slower. Okay. Go a little slower, amigo. Okay. Okay, chill, chill. Okay, I got this one. Okay. He's yeah. got some cord. Genius. Big brain over there in my dad. Tying strings together. Okay, well, we're just, uh, I was gonna do a time lapse, but we're just gonna tell you that we're putting the wires all the way through from the back. There's like a little side area on the, uh, on the outside of the gunnel, or the inside of the gunnel, uh, where the wires can go. And that's where we're feeding them. I don't wanna bore you with the details. We'll show you it when it's done. So a lot of stuff has happened in the last few hours. It's like five o'clock in the evening right now. Uh, my dad had to head off and do some work at his office. And so I've been doing what things I can on the boat. We didn't film probably two plus hours of figuring out where wires have to go, sticking our hands up the fiberglass laden holes and trying to get the cables out. It was a mess. We finally got, I think everything we can do for right now. I have to buy two transducers, one for the trolling motor, because I guess it didn't come with that for Garmin, and a through-hole transducer shoots uh, the sonar right through the fiberglass hole, and it allows you to have sonar when you're on plane running down the lake. And so, I think the next step for me is to put rods and tackle in the boat. I have put uh, the carpet, you know, laid inside of my rod box that I do every single year, just to protect the reels as they bounce around, because I haven't found a single bass boat, even Skeeters, that come with a lot of padding on the inside. So I add that in there. It takes a while to cut it to the exact precise shape of the inside. I moved the light post from one side to the other, and now I'm gonna put in the rods into the boat, which is the fun part. There we go. Rods and reels. This is not my 2021 arsenal. This is actually still my 2019 arsenal because we have not any complications of any kind, but we have uh, a new way of ordering products from Lose and Strike King, and I've just kind of been delaying purposefully my order for 2021, so don't worry, my arsenal is coming. And uh, I'll have you know, some giveaways to give away some of my 2020 gear as well, so stay tuned on my Instagram for that. We might do one on YouTube as well, but most of my giveaways are over on Instagram. So we're just gonna load all these, all these in here. I don't really care about organization right now. I just want to make sure they all fit because I've got uh, a little bit of fishing to do and I'll organize when I get there. But as of right now, we are just rigging this bad boat up. All right. Now comes the fun part. So these things right here are the power pole blades, one of the coolest, if not the coolest innovation that I've had on my boat the last really five or six years that I bass fished. And uh, they are basically a hydraulic shallow water anchor. These reach to about nine, nine and a half feet deep, even though they say 10 feet, they only reach to nine, nine and a half. And they anchor you to the bottom when you're fishing in shallow water. Incredibly useful around docks, shallow grass, you know, fishing around shallow wood, that kind of stuff. I use my power poles 
every time I dock the boat, every time I put it on the trailer or, or get ready to put it on the trailer, I'm using these pieces of equipment. And these are the uh, hydraulic pumps that allow this to go up and down, as you'll see here in a second. Now, I'm not gonna show you guys every step of installing these because I've made like two videos on that, and so I'll have both of them linked below. In my experience, the second one better than the first, but the first one I talk about uh, putting on one power pole, and the second video I talk about putting on dual power poles, all of these being the top of the line blade anchor. So let's get to uh, rigging these things. Well, everybody, that is uh, most of the video. We're gonna have a little bit more tomorrow morning. We have to hook the power pole hydraulic lines up to uh, the pumps that are in there. We got all the batteries figured out. Uh, we currently can't figure out how to get the hydraulic jack plate to go up and down, but you know what? We're gonna figure it out in the morning, or I guess later on today, because it's 1.30 in the morning. We are tired, and we're gonna get some sleep, come back out here and have what went from a rowboat to a fully rigged professional tour series bass boat in under two days so a lot of work but it's all for you guys well good morning everybody we are back in the boat i'm tired i got to sleep in though which was nice but uh the power poles are all fully done they're all bled as you call it to get the air out they go up and down I think people on Fridays stay home a lot more because there's more noise going on. But really the last step in this boat uh, building process is putting on the, the last Boat Logics mount. I'm just gonna talk through it, it's loud over there. The Boat Logics mounts are an incredible way to mount your fishing electronics where they are incredibly secure and look really, really awesome. So I'm gonna take the last few little Allen bolts that I have right here screw in the uh, the boat lodgers mount which of course is made specifically to fit your exact boat make and model people at boat logics are geniuses and they have awesome steel cutting machines that get these things precision cut for your exact boat so i'm going to put these screws on maybe figure out the electronic position but probably not today i want to head back to waco and uh hang out with my wife It always takes a few days for the power poles to kind of get aligned with each other, so that's why that one was slow to come up. But this video is done. I'm done filming. I'm ready to go fish it. I see the lake right over there. We're gonna turn the camera. You see the lake over there? Yeah, I wanna go out there. But believe it or not, we do have a few more things we have to do to the boat, but really it is fishable. Like I said in the, a few minutes ago in the video, it has gone from being a glorified fiberglass rowboat to being a tournament level piece of work. I mean, this thing is incredible. It doesn't take a monkey to see that this boat is beautiful and of course now it has all the necessary things on there that I need besides a few miscellaneous accessories to be a successful bass fisherman for you guys because of course my goal is to catch more fish and so could I do all this? Could I be a YouTuber without all this fancy stuff? Yes I could but I love the fact that I get to work with the highest quality companies in the industry to present something to you guys and that I get to use that is just top of the line. I like to use rods and reels that are, you know, middle to top of the line, but of course I also like to, you know, go down to my roots, kayak fish, bank fish when I get the chance. But I'm not going to turn down the opportunity to work for companies like Skeeter, Yamaha, Boat Logics, and the rest. It is a super humbling experience, and uh, I just get to live my dream and catch fish for a living every day. So with that said, we'll see you guys on the next episode where we're going to be teaching you guys how to catch more fish right here on TRF.